the market report for the 24th of April, 2024. Well, right, the disclaimer and the news events. So today I want to talk about something that uh, is dear to you all and uh, a lot of people are also asking. And uh, uh, whenever I go out for my meetings, right, uh, I tend to get a lot of these questions. So other than Bitcoin, the other asset class that has been uh, going up is none other than gold. So the question today, uh, which is what I want to share, is would gold rise further in 2024? Okay, so let's, uh, you know, move into this discussion and let's see. Right, there are a few theories as to why gold is trading higher. The question now remains, will gold continue on this trajectory? Let's review the factors that mainly discuss and their roles in gold's ascent, right? So financial outlets have noted that gold's value tend to increase amidst geopolitical unrest. Uh, this trend is partly because gold is regarded as a safe haven asset, though its market response to geopolitical events is not always immediate or predictable. Okay, uh, gold's price vary during different geopolitical crises depending on several factors. Now, in, in the past, there were situations where they, we had geopolitical crisis, just like what is happening right now. As, but gold did not increase, the value of gold did not increase during that time, right? The de degree to which gold appreciates during times of geopolitical strife hinges on how investors perceive the crisis likely affected on the global economy and financial stability in the first place, okay? So, so this is the keyword. Um, let me just highlight it down. How investors perceive. So everything about price today, the value is what the investors perceive. Okay. So would this crisis that we are looking right now uh, affect the global economy and financial stability as a whole, and how long it will affect? That would af then affect the price of gold. When a situation is seen as a precursor to economic uncertainty, investors tend to flock to gold for security. Okay, so that's why sometimes it's a bit different. Uh, previously, we had wars that uh, was very, very confined. But this time, you know, there's this potential of it moving out from the current borders that we've seen. So it is different. So everything, every time is different. So the recent escalation between Israel and Iran has raised concerns, but that seems to be a de-escalation in the offensive and rhetoric that might have otherwise spiraled into a broader Middle East conflict. Notably, after an apparent retaliation strike, there was a speculation of an Israeli operation targeting sites near Isfahan in central Iran. Uh, Reuters have has reported that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's security uh, cabinet, not the security cabinet, is the war cabinet, okay? Uh, okay, the, the, the war cabinet um, approved but later reconsidered plan for a military operation inside Iran. This um, was in response to Tehran's April 14 uh, missile and, and drone operation inside Iran. Right, whereby uh, you know the whereby the the Iran sent an attack and totally uh attack attack Iran there. Ultimately, the cabinet decided against a direct strike on Iran nuclear facilities and other key sites actions, which could have triggered a more extensive conflict. Now, the Iranian foreign minister, Hossein Amir, in an interview with NBC News, stated that while the incident is under investigation, there has been no evidence linking the attack to Israel. He has, however, issued a caution asserting that any future strikes by Israel would mean an immediate and forceful Iranian response. Now, for now, you could say we may not see further escalation, but one could argue that the world is closer to a world war than ever before, right? So th this is one of the reasons why this is so crucial. We are having wars at two fronts. Don't forget, we have still have the real Ukrainian war happening. 
Now, other factors pushing the price of gold is, is the reacceleration of inflation or what we call reflation. During inflationary periods, gold often maintains its value or even increase in price. And we've been seeing the, the, the inflation coming up again in the last three months, right? And it came to the point where even Powell had to admit, you know, uh, yes, we are seeing inflation right now back up again. We have to be careful, okay? And um, and uh, that has also caused the Fed to cut back, you know, and, and think again whether the three rate cuts is still feasible for this year. Yeah? Other than that, apart from gold, the value of other commodities has also increased. Oil and various metals have seen prices rise, uh, rising, and with the consumer price index also climbing, this scenario's reflation becomes relevant. Commodities are closely linked with inflation, often serving an initial driver of rising prices. Now, the recent surge in commodity prices, including the gold, can be attributed to what is known as a commodity super cycle. Okay, this is a period where uh, it's characterized by sustained high prices for natural resources driven by global demand that significantly exceeds supply. Now, here is the reason which supports the super cycle narrative that we are looking at right now. Now, post pandemic uh, recovery efforts in many countries have included substantial fiscal stimulus measures aimed at rejuvenating economies. These measures often involve large-scale infrastructure projects that require significant amounts of commodities such as copper, steel, and energy driving up all these commodity prices, right? So other than that, there's a global shift towards sustainable energy as well. Uh, we have seen this, which necessitates extensive use of certain commodities. The production of electric vehicles, solar panels, wind turbines, and other renewable energy technologies rely heavily on metals like copper, nickel, and rare earth elements. This transition is expected to sustain high demand for these commodities, reflecting a key characteristic of a super cycle. And other than that, we also remember the COVID-19 pandemic. It also exposed vulnerabilities in global supply chains leading to disruptions in production and transportation of various commodities. This disruption coupled with geopolitical tensions is key in key producing regions have tightened supply and contributed to price increases as well. So in conclusion, the rise in gold prices is influenced by numerous factors of which only two are discussed over here. While the risk of war contributes to maintaining high gold prices, it alone is not sufficient to sustain them indefinitely. So if this factor is considered along the super cycle narrative, the argument becomes more compelling. Should gold and other commodities truly be in a super cycle, as facts presented uh, suggest, we could see an upward trend lasting 10 to 15 years. Okay, so this is something that we need to look at. But one thing's for sure, uh, when we are in a super cycle, don't think that it'll move in a straight line. There will be prices going up, coming down, going up, coming down. But when you see the overall movements of it, of the commodities, you would actually see this where it's forming uh, in what technical terms you call in an uptrend. Higher, higher, higher lows, higher, higher, higher lows, higher, higher, higher lows. Okay? So... Uh, you know, prepare for more high gold prices if uh, whatever that's discussed here true plays to the narrative that commodities right now is in a commodity super cycle. Uh, so we have to look and see. Um, and uh, it, previously, I also reported that the current uh, floor for the gold, right, is uh, roughly at uh, between 1008 to 1009, where most reports are actually focusing at the 1009 area. So that would could actually form what we call that low price right over there, the lower low before it moves at to a higher again. Okay, so with that, that's the end of the report for today. Let's move on to the charts.